Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in on today. This is your girl, Lady K, with my co-host, Apostle Katie Owens. Blessings. And we are the dynamic duel coming to you with our What's the Tea? And we yeah. are thank, we want to thank www.tssl radio dot com all gospel all the time I want to thank them for allowing us to have this opportunity to come to you and express our reality through the word and guess what we will do just that we are still on our sprees married with our refriends and I don't know about y'all, but Apostle KD Owens, man, listen, you brought it last week. And I can't wait to hear what you have to say this week. It was a lot going on. And you brought some of it to the table. But I know for a shadow of a doubt that you have more to tell us on this afternoon. I hope y'all got your pens and paper. Yeah, I said, I hope you got your pen and paper. Get your pen and your paper, your paper and your pen, because we going all the way in. So write it down. How are you feeling today, Apostle Katie? Ready. Ready. All right, let's go ahead and pray us in. Thank you all for um, listening in with us on today. And again, following this podcast, you will hear Lady K's song forever. You who FST want the one and only. And please call in and request other songs that I have out as well. I would love to hear what you think about the songs. And if you want to go a little further, go to www.ladykatrina ministries on YouTube and hear the rest of them. And you can also see these podcasts if you miss any of them. We've been doing it for almost a year now, huh? Or maybe going on two years. Long than a year, boo. <laughs> well, but we definitely enjoy what we do. Let us go. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory for this day. We thank, magnify your name for our very being. Now, God, strengthen us and give us wisdom and knowledge to give to your people. But be careful not to give self, but to give the word. And what that means is give you. We'll be careful to give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Apostle K, what do you have for us on this afternoon with the series, Mary, but all the friends? Well, first I want to give honor to God who is the head of my life. Thank him for this golden opportunity to minister his word on a plethora of platforms, you know, through Facebook and through um, YouTube, you know, and, and Instagram. And now here on www.gsslradio.com, all Jesus, all gospel, all music, where we just get down with it, get down in Jesus' name. Thank God for my lovely host my wife, my boo, my best friend. Aww. But as we get into this again for the third week, I didn't know we were going to go this long, but uh, my my host, she said she enjoyed what God is doing, so we're going to go as long as God allows us to go, I guess. And I'm fine with that. But uh, to piggyback off something we said last week is that uh, it is very important to have a foundation. And the foundation is the friendship because the topic is we're, we're, we're married, but are we friends? And I want to kind of pick up off of this, how I see a lot of seniors and they're not properly raising up or training us, the younger generation, on how to properly maintain a healthy marriage. I don't want to just be married long because too many people are married long but married wrong. And I want to be actually married long and strong and i think the durability to a solid marriage is friendship 
because a lot of seniors, a lot of guys on the male side I know that I talked to, like I was saying last week, um, Lady O, is that it's like they'll say things like, uh, if you ask the question, how did y'all make this long? Man, by the 15, 20 years, I just stopped talking to her. I don't say nothing to her. I just live, I just go whatever she say, uh, whatever, just, I don't really say much to her. And when you lack communication, uh, 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 that you're you're losing your salvation. What saves your marriage is communication, because if we stop communicating with each other, stop dialoguing with each other, then we'll stop growing with each other. Because the more we talk to each other, the more that we will learn each other. Because, like I said, my wife is not the same person she was when I first started dating her. I'm not. <laughs> She's not the same person. I've seen her evolve. I'm talking about the good stuff. I've seen her evolve because there's some things in her that I prayed for that God would rid her of. I did. And I saw and I see a lot of those things taking place where God is breaking up fallow ground, moving some things, rearranging some things, dismissing some things. Because as a husband, I should be praying that God give me the wife that I need for my life. And with that, God is going to strategically start doing the work as I pray and seek God more on what he want me to do to be what he want me to be so that she can be molded into what I need her to be for me. So a better me represents a better her or a better me will bring forth a better her. The worse I get, the worse she'll become because as me being head and being the husband and being her partner and supposedly her friend, if I'm mean to her, horrible to her, terrible to her, it's not going to uplift her and push her and bring her to greater. So, so the more I become great, the more she become great. And as her friend, I should want that for her. And the reason why we have a long lasting relationship, a marriage, and we're healthy as we are, is because we get into it. We have our 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 heated say, conversations. We have our uh um let me say it the way that God gets it now. Let me say it. Our our sanctify our sanctify Holy Ghost feel conversations. Cause you know the Holy Ghost fire. And so yeah. Okay. And, with, and my wife, she, she, she and I, after we didn't spit all our beans and and, and 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 knock the rice can over per se through talking. We always find a way to get back to the center of, okay, now that we didn't get all of our children blew our steam, let's push that aside, now let's talk. And we always find a way to get back to say, okay, you was wrong on this, I was wrong on this. I was wrong, you was wrong, I was wrong, we was wrong. And we get to the place of solving it and making it right. We don't just uh, go to bed and read, because I made it my best. With any friends I have, any partners I have, Anybody on my job, I'm not going to leave without letting you know that there's a way that we can handle this to where we don't have to destroy something valuable. Because my coworkers are valuable to me. Because I don't want my coworkers to say, I don't like working with Kelvin. I don't want to be around Kelvin because Kelvin, Kelvin, and Kelvin, and Kelvin, so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So if I can get my coworkers to say, a, B, and C, one, two, and three. And they can agree to that, or they can say A, B, C, one, two, three, and I can agree to that. We can move forward in our work life together. Same with my wife. If we get together and say, okay, baby, this is where I feel short. Because I told my wife, when I pray, I pray and ask God to show me me. I don't really go to God on my wife. Show me her, God. She wrong. She did God. She did it. She, no, I don't know. No. Even if I feel that she's a million percent wrong, I still go to God and say, what did I do? to cause the fire? What did I do? What 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 stones of coal or what wood or what spark did I put to this fire to enhance this fire to a greater uh, 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 level to cause destruction or catastrophes or problems in, in between us? And when God showed me me, I work on me. And so when we come back to talk and reason together, I say, baby, this is what I done. This was me. I messed up. I feel sure. But this is what you done. 
that kind of fuel it to push me there. So she can know next time, okay, well, I might not need to say that because it's touchy. Or I might not need to do that because it rolls in the wrong way. Vice versa. She'll come to me and say the same thing. Well, this is what you've done. You know, I admit I've done this, but this is what you've done. We reason together. Because the Bible said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. I don't want to just be at all, walk around the house with my lip poked out. She walked around with her lip poked out. Because the old folks, you say, like, on this wire. It take more muscles to frown than to smile. You mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. you mentioned three things earlier, and it kind of pointed, pointed back to one of the, the but, uh, bulletins that we had. And I think we're going to only get to one bulletin today. Great. And that was dealing with communication. Married, but we're friends. How do we develop a friendship that can last to go into a forever marriage in this communication? You mentioned the older guy that said, well, I just stopped talking to him. And there's many other ways that you can communicate beside verbal. There is five languages that you can utilize in communication. Mm -hmm. um, let's 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 kind of try to dive into that when we talk about communication. Can we talk? That's a broad subject by itself. Right, right. When you talk about communication, um, when you meet a person, you introduce yourself. Sometimes in a marriage, you might need to reintroduce yourself because, like you said, wow, that's deep. We evolve. And take that person out on a date because you introduced yourself to that person. Now you need to get to know that person. Um, I heard, I think it was Tyler Perry in one of his plays said um, that you meet your wife or you meet your, your husband um, every 10 years. You meet a new person every 10 years. I think it's more frequent than that. I really Me too. Do. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, because as you age each year, there's something changing about you each year. So you meet you you meet that your new wife and your new husband each year. They turn a year older, you meet a new person. And they're developing something new each year. It may take 12 months for them to develop it, it may take six months for them to develop it, but you're de you're developing a new aspect of yourself. So I just feel that um, each birthday or whatever you want, whatever day you want to choose, that y'all rekindle or reintroduce yourselves to each other as if you just meeting. And that's communicating because that way you get to know the new person that you marry. A lot of people rekindle or re do re a re reunion or what is it? Reunite, re. Their marriage vows, uh, forgot what they call it, but um, they they redo their their marriage life vows all over again. Why? Because they know that they're they're starting something new, but they don't know that some people do it because they want to just rekindle what they had. But no, mm -hmm. you 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 redo it because you you're marrying a new person. You wearing somebody different, you know, that person you had with the curly curl hair down their back and the man with the high top fade, that ain't no high top fade no more. It's, it's a low, it's a low cut ball. And that woman that you thought with the long hair, the hair down her back, she done gone through menopause. Now she got a little fro, natural. <laughs> That's if she got the fro. She probably bald as you are. It's, <laughs> the, the point I'm making is they're changing. And as you change, you need to reintroduce that person in a communicating level where you both can still remain friends. Um, as my, my co-partner, my husband had mentioned earlier that um, when we have our Holy Ghost moments, um, we learn something new about each other. And I'm going to be transparent. He might not want me to be transparent on this, but I'm going to be transparent anyway. Um, he asked me a question about my past. 
And it had something to do with, with my past dealing with romance. And he asked me, it was pretty deep. And I, that ponders in my head still today on why he asked me that question. Because I mean, I'm like, well, you ask me that question, I'm going to ask you too. And we end up learning something about ourselves while talking about our past. It made me realize that, that the steps that I made back then have changed to make me a better person of what I am today. Because had I, had I not went through what I went through in my past, I may not be the person that I am today. So you grow and you change. And as a couple, as a marriage couple, as a friendship, your friendship changes. Have you ever noticed that, and I'm going to give it back to Apostle, because we want to stay right there in the communication level and talk about the different levels of communication. But um, have you noticed that your friends, I'm not even talking about relationship now, I'm talking about your friends, how some of them have, have kind of fallen off and you've made new friends. Some will last forever. Some are like seasons. They change winter, spring, summer, fall. And some are like the evergreen, evergreen tree. They never shed. They're always there. Well, you need that when you have, think about your relationship with your spouse or your marriage, you need to think about the, ever, the evergreen tree. It goes through a lot of storms. It goes through a lot of water sometimes. And sometimes it takes a lot of heat. But it remains the same. What are you saying? It stays strong. It stays green. And it has the ability to uh, uh, handle any type of attack because that's a good friend. When they can put up with your heat, they can put up with your flood, them, your, your cry, your tears. They can put up with your wind. You talking a lot. You fussing a lot. Some of y'all use some other words too. And of course, sometimes you can be very cold. You can be cold hearted, but that tree remains the same. Mm -hmm. So, talking about communication, affirm, uh, our affirm, our affirmation, body language, communication verbally, and give giving. Those are some com those communication levels. Uh, which one you think is the most will be most important when you're building a a, a friendship, apostle? You can't say which one is important because all of them are very important. All of them are heavy and weighty and needed. So you really can't say which one is important. That'll be almost like debunking the other one or mm -hmm. putting mm -hmm. pulling. Putting one to the side and saying, well, this one is better than this one. When all of them are critical. Mm -hmm. All of them. Yeah. And I agree with you on that. Because a lot of times when we, this is a book out, and it has you to pick out the, the one that just sits out the most for you. And it's okay for you to pick out the one that sits mo out most for you. But you can't just say, well, I'm a, I like affirmation, so I'm going to give affirmation to him or her. Not necessarily. You need to give them all. But when you find out the one that, that really likes the fire under your friend, your, your spouse, keep that going. One of our pastors that we're friends with, and if he's my pastor, Ashley, back in Louisiana, he told us, keep the gas tank on full. Don't never allow the gas tank to go on E. That means always keep your spouse gassed up. Gassed up. On full. Never on empty. And I'm not talking about monetary. I'm talking love. about love. I'm talking love. about friendship. Keep that smile on that face. Keep 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 her guessing, you know. One of my friend, one of our friends down in, in New in New Orleans area, they said 
I won't let my spouse beat me doing nothing. If he bring me a, 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 some roses, I'm going out there and buy him a car. <laughs> they always, they, they like, in like in competition, but they're not in competition. They're just showing the love. See, which but that's a good thing to, when it comes and, to that. I said, that's a good thing to be in competition when it comes to that because it, it's pushing each one of you to search deeper in that person's life. Mm hmm place to love them or another level to love them or another realm to love them in. Because Absolutely. if I level right here and I max out, then I'll get burnt out and you'll get burnt out. But if I reach deeper and you find a deeper spot in me to to show love and to love me on another level, then it's going to cause me to want to appreciate you even more, especially if I feel like I'm competitive. Let's be competitive in this love because it's going to strengthen the both of us at the end of the day because we're competitive on the same team for the same goal. Right. So when we do that, of being competitive on the love on the love level, and I, what better way to do it? Start off small. You know, if you bring me something that I like, <laughs> you know, Bay knows I love baked beans. You know, he know I love uh, see these little fla flavored chips at the uh, Dollar Tree or the little dollar store. I know he he's a gummy worm eating guy. And if I go and buy some gummy worms and just hide them up in his seat or put them in his car or, you know, put them in somewhere where I know that he'll be, you know, he'll go randomly. He'll be like, oh, they bought me some gummy worms. Well, let me go to the store because I'm, I'm going to surprise her. He does it all the time. I mean, all the time. I'm going to brag on mine. <laughs> he does it all the time. He'll be just because. He's like, babe, I got you something. He'll come in here and give me something. I'll be like, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Now I got to try to go max this out. So I'll, I'll go on Amazon or something. Because I know it's something on Amazon that I know that he'll like. And I'll order it. And also they come in. I'm like, babe, you got a package. <laughs> <laughs> so we try to do things to try to just keep each other with a smile on the face. He sent me some pictures one time and I was like, oh my God, I'm speechless. Because it's just some things that he does that just keeps me, you know, keep me in the awe. And that's why you have to keep that thing like, like exciting. That's that communication, you know. It's just like a song. I know the church song. But it's a song that we can use for our marriage. Keep your lamp trim and burning. Keep the lamp trim and burning. You got to keep that lamp trim and burning. Because once you keep that, if you ever let that fire go out, then y'all can fall out. Oh, Lord. So you always got to keep that, that, that light, that lamp trim and burning so that the fire could be um, always burning. Make sure you have, keep you some kerosene, you know? And make sure that you keep uh, some lighter fluid because if you ever let that fire go out, it's gonna be a cold day. Oh Lord. Well, it's almost that time and we wanna make sure that you stay tuned to www.gsslradio.com, all gospel, all the time, where music is played and we are live. Yes. Doing podcast, what's the tea? Stay tuned to listen to Lady K forever. I am your host, Lady K, and this is our co host, Apostle Katie Owens. What do you have to say before we sign off? Hold true, Church of God in Christ. With <laughs> Jesus Christ, head of our life. Give them that address. 2231 Avenue G in, in Inslee, Alabama. I'm going to say Louisiana. <laughs> 2231 Avenue G in Inslee, Alabama. 35218 is where we be every Sunday. Come join us. Until the next time. Bye. 11 a.m.
Bye.